Hi, Alex. Hey, Alex. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start, and this is December the 14th, 2022. Um, this is our All Lives Matter call with Dr. Alex and Dr. David. This presentation is for education and informational purposes only. And since we're going to be talking about issues of health and well being, we wanted to make sure that you understand this information is not intended to heal or cure anything. Everything in the presentation are the opinions of Dr. Alex Lloyd, Dr. David Peck, myself, Johanna Chan, or you if you choose to share. You should always check with a licensed healthcare provider about any specific health concerns you may have. All right, guys, take it away. Thank you All so right. much, Johanna. I'm uh, Alex Lloyd. The guy in the middle is Dr. David Peck. And we are here to try to help uh, between a million and a billion people increase their emotional well being by 100% or more in 12 months or less. And we believe we can give you everything you need for free to do that. Uh, and, and why are we doing it? Um, there's no upsell. There's no gotcha. Uh, David and I just thought this would be a good thing to do in the world today, especially with all the uh, post-COVID, I guess we're post-COVID, at least uh, toward, toward the end. But our world has changed so dramatically. And uh, emotional well-being was a top 50 issue in the world before COVID. And based on research I saw a few months ago, it's now a top five issue in the world. Um, so anyway, that's what we're about. And uh, the topic that David uh, chose for today is about insecurity. And let me just tell you, in uh, 40 years of working with people, uh, I don't know that there's a bigger issue on the planet than insecurity. So, Dave, why don't you uh, go ahead with uh, what you were thinking, yes. and I'll uh, tack on a post-it note, and then we'll do a custom uh, healing process for it. Great. Thanks a lot, Alex. Um, so, yeah, um, this week's, uh, you know, I wasn't really clear on what exactly I wanted to, uh, talking about addressing, but sort of had the idea of something that, um, you know, we're always looking for ways to get people in to the processes, to take the step to, to, um, to start the journey to emotional well-being. And, and the, the other way that I like to express what uh, Dr. Alex talked about the admission was that it's a, it's a sense, it's a, the idea of becoming free emotionally not being bound by certain situations or what other people, external factors that cause us, you know, internal stress, et cetera. But I thought the insecurity was, everybody has areas of insecurity and they're, they're slightly different for everybody. But as I see it, this could be, this is one of the clues that a person can have as to what it is that is like a major thing that's holding them back or creating stress for them. And so, you know, I thought, you know, if we just talked about insecurities in general and what they are, then that it might be, be a way for people, you know, people that are watching or people that are trying to get other people involved to help that person who is struggling to identify what it is they, they should work on. So anyway, that was, that was part of the, 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 uh, the motivation uh, behind it. And then, um, so, you know, my take on this is that, you know, it's, it's, it's always about fear. It's all about fear of something. So, you know, and, and Alex, you made the point earlier, it's something, you know, you're feeling unsafe about something. So um, uh, usually something like not being good enough. But now the other, before I move on, the other thing I wanted to say that is very important about this is that um, when we talk about people's insecurities or emotional vulnerabilities, I guess, another way to put this would be is that it really is and I don't want this to sound really cynical but I want it to be actually in a realistic way is that this is sort of a target you know our personal targets or targets of people for how they can be manipulated 
emotionally. So, you know, when, when we get a sense that this person's insecure about this or that, you know, that, that, you know, attack, you know, kind of thing. And that, that leads to not only on an individual level, but on a mass scale also. So it's that more important for us to be able to identify in ourselves, what are those insecurities and to deal with them and to try to heal them. So, you know, I have my personal stories. I've, I've talked about them before, you know, related to the Donna Greenberg story and, you know, some, some personal, personal things, but, but really they, 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 um, those issues for me, those insecurities for me, um, have held me back for decades, you know, really um, from, you know, having the, you know, a, you know, good relationships and, you know, that kind of thing. And so um, anyway, um, that's some of the things that I wanted to say, Alex, I don't know if okay. you have. Know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, um, when, you're, when you're talking about insecurity, you are talking about safety. Okay, it's a safety issue. And in psychology, and this was not even in graduate school, this was in undergraduate. I think it was in the first psychology class I ever had, just a general psychology textbook. And um, it talked about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this, uh, this goes way back in psychology, is very well accepted. It's kind of a pyramid if you look at it visually. But the base of the pyramid, the very first foundational principle of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, and that's exactly what it's talking about, is, is the things that you need the most in your life to have the life you are wishing for, hoping for, praying for, or at least as close as you can get to it, okay? Well, step number one in the hierarchy of needs in psychology is safety. Number one, if you are in a war zone, if, if somebody's chasing you with a knife, um, nothing else matters, okay? You've got to get safe before you can think about food or love or anything else, That's okay? True. And there's physical safety and there's non-physical safety. Okay, uh, I, I, I really, I, a, a real strong memory of mine was in a summer when I was, uh, I grew up in the fireworks business and uh, it was fireworks season and I was selling fireworks. And um, I've always loved animals and, I've, and we, and my family and uh, the family I grew up in and my family too has always had dogs. Okay, I've always loved dogs. And even when there'd be a dog that would act ferocious or something or that everybody would be afraid of or whatever, for, for some reason, I wouldn't be afraid. And I would go up to the dog and offer him my hand and, you know, whatever. And I'd really never had that turn bad on me, even though some people would say, oh, you don't want to be doing that with that dog, you know. Well, it, it'd be okay except for this one time during fireworks season and this, this customer came up and I saw the dog. So I went around the counter and, and the dog started, you know, misbehaving. And the owner said, you don't want to get close to this dog. And I, and I said, Oh, it's okay. I've done that a lot before dogs like me. And he said, no, you don't understand. And immediately that dog, came after me, all right? And I was scared then, I guarantee you. But he went on to tell me, this dog has been abused as a puppy. And he just does not feel safe with anyone except me. And it took me a long, long time for him to feel safe with me, okay? Maybe you have not been abused or harmed like that in your life. If you have, I'm so sorry. And I believe we can help you with that. But I believe anyone who is ever hearing this has suffered a safety related pain that you're still carrying with you because rejection causes pain 
and there's a safety issue. And I've never met anyone who didn't have a rejection issue. Well, if you feel rejected or you're concerned about you might be rejected, you feel unsafe. And here's the big kicker on that. That can work even if it's you rejecting yourself. Which, these, which then means if you're doing that, you feel unsafe all the time because you're with yourself all the time, okay? So, um, David, this does, is- Does that get into that, does that get into that self-hate idea? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry, Alex, I, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely it does. Yeah, yeah, so- um, to me, this is a safety issue, emotional and physical, but the place that usually gets us, because we understand the physical, if, if a dog is going to bite me, don't mess with the dog, but the emotional, you can't get away from it always, okay, and that's what's a killer, so if, if you have rejection issues inside you that have not been healed, or if you reject yourself for some behavior or lack of behavior, you are going to feel unsafe, which means you are going to feel insecure. It's just that easy. And, and, and David is right. Insecurity is kind of like, have you ever, um, have you ever like, uh, like hit your arm or something and had a, had a pretty bad bruise. It, it wasn't so bad you need to go to the doctor, but it was a pretty bad bruise. And for several days after that, if, if someone's about to hit that or you're getting close to something or someone touches it lightly, what do you do? You protect it, you protect it. Oh, I'm sorry, I, yeah, I bumped my arm the other day. Well, we do exactly the same thing with the emotional insecurities. We start protecting ourselves from those, those rejections wow. and pains. And when we do that, we start to negatively affect our relationships. And now when you mess, when you mess up your relationships, ladies and gentlemen, that's the whole ball game. So if you're not careful with this one, it can cause you to lose everything. So that's my two cents, Dave. Yeah. So, but, and now at the same time, um, you can actually gain by if depending on like, say if you're in a, in that relationship that is you're unsafe in, it could actually be holding you back. It could. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you either have to resolve the the issue, or or you need to separate until right. you can resolve, or until you know you find something that's right, or whatever. Yeah, I mean, so many times I, I feel as though you know we it, traditionally we're in we're in situations even family members, you know, there's conflicts there, you know, right. and, and and we're not all emotionally balanced in the family uh, clearly you know so 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 then you're you're kind of you're a little bit stuck in a way because you know you're fat what are you going to do you you have to separate from your family then essentially in a way to get freedom yeah, yeah. And, and and dave that's one of the reasons why uh the holiday season that we're coming into well we're in it right now is the highest suicide rate time of the year by far because People are thinking about going to Thanksgiving or Christmas with people that they maybe don't see a whole lot. And there's a reason they don't see them a whole lot. And yeah. so they're thinking, oh my goodness, if, if, if I go, is that, is that bruise, is that emotional internal bruise I have gonna get whacked over and over again there? And I, that didn't sound like fun, okay? So, so I may not go at all, but if I do go, Dave, I'm going to be going in like this yeah. instead of like this. And that that's a recipe for a pretty uh, depressing Miserable. day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we better Agreed. do that. We better yeah. do the show, Dave. Yes, sir. Okay. So we, we pray, we request, 
that all destructive negative cellular memories, unhealthy habits, addictions, false limiting beliefs, all those things that hold us back in life related to systemic insecurities and the feeling of unsafety related to any personal issues, that these be found, opened and healed for everyone listening to this today through love, light, truth, and God. Amen. Okay, amen. Okay, and the first position to heal this is both hands in the jaws. There's four positions, for both hands in the jaws for healing systemic insecurities. Second position, left hand temple, right hand jaw. Third position, left hand temple, right hand, Adam's apple, left hand temple, right hand, Adam's apple. Fourth position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Left hand temple, right hand bridge. Just that everybody can identify their own insecurities. to first strengthening, emotional strengthening. Okay, first position again, both hands, jaws. We'll just do two cycles. Normally we do three cycles, um, but just generally, I've just been doing two for um, time's sake. Second position, left hand temple, right hand jaw. Third position, left hand temple, right hand Adam's apple. And fourth position, left hand temple, right hand bridge. Left hand temple, right hand bridge. Okay, Alex. Okay, let's tap on some acupuncture points. Let's start with side of the hand. Temples. Collarbones. Middle finger. Under the nose. Thumb. 
collarbones, under the eyes, little finger, middle of the chest, under the arms, index finger, sore spot, chin, under the nipples, 9G, eyes open, closed, open, eyes down to the left, down to the right, circle your eyes, circle them back the other way, uh -huh. one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. all right. Please activate governing and conception vessel three times. Three times. If it hurts, you're pushing too hard. Most people call this yin and yang. Okay, now custom healing centers. Let's start with throat. Please open and harmonize. If it hurts, you're massaging too hard. Middle of the stomach. Please open and harmonize. Forehead. Please open and harmonize. Heart. Please open and harmonize under the belly button i'm yeah under the belly button sorry please open and harmonize crown please open and harmonize base or root please open and harmonize middle of the stomach again please open and harmonize. And then let's do left hand brain stem, right hand forehead for about a oh, minute and a half or two. Brain stem basically is un and subconscious mind, forehead conscious mind. So your entire whole mind all at the same time. Very powerful. Both hands over the heart, slow, deep breaths, one after the other. Let the code process. When you're ready, take a look at the zero to 10 that I hope maybe you took before, even though we forgot to mention it. Um, and then I would look at it again in about 30 minutes. It should be better in 30 minutes than it is now. All right, uh, Johanna, if we have a question or comment or anything, I've got uh, a few minutes here if uh, Dave does. All right, so we have one hand up, but Annie, I'm gonna allow you to go ahead and unmute Annie. Hi doctors, can you guys hear me? <clears throat> Hi, Hi. Um, I just, it would be easier if I spoke instead of typed. Um, last night I had a really strange dream. And I know you're not dream interpreters, but I feel like it has something to do with the codes that I've been working on. Um, I dreamed that I was in a strange house with lots and lots of rooms. Um, and inside of each of these rooms were many different people that I didn't know, and I didn't like them there. And when I woke up from my dream, I realized that the dream, the house represented my body and the people in all these different rooms that I couldn't always see and find, but I could hear them there were my memories. 
And one of the fears that I've been having that's been coming up consistently is the fear that I will not, no matter how many codes I do or how often I do them, I will not be able to heal these memories or get these memories to leave. Just like I wanted these people to leave my house. Um, and so I was just curious what your thoughts are or thoughts were on that. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll share mine and Dave can uh, chime in. Um, first of all, you're not going to get rid of memories. Uh, they're there. They're always going to be there, I think, as long as we're in this life and this body. Mm -hmm. uh, but to me, when you look at a memory, you want to look for um, you want to look for four things. What was the falsehood that was part of this memory? What or what's the lie? What is the fear or fear based emotion or feeling or thought? Um, that was part of this event from a negative perspective. Number three, after this event ended, what negative lesson did you kind of take into the rest of your life? In other words, how did that impact? Was that a turning point in any way, uh, in a negative way? And then number four, what is the positive lesson that you need to learn about and about this memory today in order to transform it from being negative to being positive or at least neutral. Okay. And I believe that is always possible. You're not going to get rid of the memories, but it's always possible for them to be transformed. And I've had people ask me, okay, well, wait a minute. What if, what if, what if my, what if my son was killed by a serial killer? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what is the pot? What, what you're saying there's some falsehood in me being angry about that or that the, <laughs> you know, the negative emotion I feel is not legitimate or that. It, no, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that that event, once it is done in our circumstance and physical world, once that's done, the only place that exists anymore is inside your mind and heart and the minds and hearts of the people that witness that, okay? And I am saying, yes, that in, in my belief system, there is always a falsehood that's part of those memories. There's always something you're believing that is not true. And it's usually the interpretation because this happened, therefore, and the, it's not that the maybe they're remembering the event that didn't happen or whatever. No, they're right about that, but their interpretation is wrong. And the wrong interpretation leads to the wrong emotion, the wrong thoughts, the wrong beliefs about that thing going forward in life, okay? So you've got to take it apart. What's the falsehood? What's the fear? What's the What's the wrong interpretation based on this happening in my life? And then finally, fourth, what is the correct interpretation in view of, of truth and love and God and, you know, all of that? So, um, yeah, you can't always get rid of, but it can be transformed. Does that make, uh, Dave, you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah, not well. Yeah, no. That you know, the only thing I was wondering was: is it a fear of not being able to heal the memories, or is yes. it the memories that are creating the fear? Oh, maybe it could be. It could be a little bit of both. Yeah, and well, Annie, yeah. go ahead. I, I was just going to say, Annie, as far as dreams go, from a psychology mm -hmm. perspective. Sometimes the actual details have meaning and they mm -hmm. may in your life, but I would need to talk to you more or you would need to think about that, about the specific details. But what's always relevant is the emotions you have from the, from the dream. The, those emotions are something your unconscious mind while you're sleeping is trying to piece together or work out in mm -hmm in your mind and heart. So um, what I would say, what were you feeling and thinking from the dream? 
definitely that's fear. What, that's what's always relevant. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. That was great, Alex. Yeah. Really nice. And, and uh, I apologize. I'm going to have to go. Um, so I love you guys. See you next week. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Johanna. Right. Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. See you, Alex. Yeah. Okay, so we have a couple questions on um, Q and A. Uh, April says definitely feeling that one, though I didn't get through the pro the whole process. So she's talking about the um, the process you guys did. It's secure, yeah. Kevin says I would love to spread the word of these calls and get people on. I wanted to see if there were was any restrictions when it came to social media and what I can say. <laughs> Is there, Johanna? That's a good question. Yeah. I've gotten some feedback on some things that I said, actually, that were a little bit censoring, but go ahead. Yeah. What do you think? You did? <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know that we have established anything, um, but that is a good question. Um, I guess we kind of stay away from political issues and religious issues on the, for the most part not yeah. condemning or criticizing that. But I mean, we haven't really established that. Um, so no, I don't know. Good question though. Yeah. Go ahead and share it, Kevin. And, and just don't try to, um, you know, summarize how any of us are actually feeling about um, politics. Yeah, the, the, the other way to view this potentially, this is the naive view, you know, my a naive view is that, you know, any, anything you're doing in, from a place of love, you know, if you're caring about these people and you want to do something to try to get them in that, I mean, with faith in God, you know, if you're acting in love, there shouldn't, you know, ultimately there's not going to be a problem. Right. That's my idea, my view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so April, um, if you want to unmute your line. Hey, I was just going to say, um, Kevin was asking the, the question if there was any limitation. I just kind of, I sort of try to say it sort of like you guys introduce it or something sometimes, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the disclaimer at the beginning, honestly, all these disclaimers as I see them, they're, they're basically legal, legalese type of um, mm -hmm. sayings that really, honestly, they have no basis in, in my view, very little basis in reality. Mm -hmm. They don't really, they, I don't think they really mean much. I mean, like I could go out on a limb here and maybe I'll get myself in trouble. But when we, when we talk about relieving stress and lowering, cutting stress and emotional balancing, we are talking about health. I mean, very much so, you know, and so, um, and yet from a legal standpoint, because of, I mean, I don't have to, you know, rant and rave about all this, but, you know, it's got us in a position where, oh, we have to say one thing that we don't really mean. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it is, it is kind of legalistic, but, but, you know, we do it and I think everybody understands, you know. Yeah, I mean, so so the whole thing is like, is there going to be something where someone's going to like sue us because of what we said? Well, I mean, I guess so. That's possible. You know, I mean, it seems extreme. You know, the fact it's the fact that we're motivated the way we are. At least I check my motivation. I feel like I'm motivated in the right way. You know, I'm not trying to hurt people. I'm just the opposite. But anyway, um, it's unfortunate. But we're in that environment. I, I see it as changing personally, the environment, the, the whole environment as, as people become more aware of this type of healing, eventually the other forms are going to become very less important. And I, I believe, you know, once people see the benefit that they can get as people that are on the call and the people that have, have experienced it, have experienced the, the shift in their energy and the shift and just so many different things based on something that's as weird as you know this kind of thing but anyway <laughs> right all right so um let me see if we have any other hands up i don't see any other hands up for questions oh yeah bridget bridget has a question hey okay. bridget hello dr alex or dr david sorry and johanna <laughs> um 
I'm just wondering, you know, every week you have these different healing codes and I'm just wondering, uh, and I'm forgive me for sound, sounding stupid, um, but how do you know which one pertains to you? Um, like now this one, for instance, insecurity, that definitely resonates with me. And um, like what Dr. Alex had said, you know, going somewhere and I always feel like that, that uh, I don't feel that, you know, I feel uh, insecure and I, I really, certain situations coming into the holidays, as they say, you know, you feel insecure. But I forget now what we did last week. And I'm just saying, I wonder, does that pertain to me? Do I need to do that as well? Um, and is it from the heart issue finder that you find out which ones pertain to you or... Well, yeah. you know i'm not i'm not sure dr david yeah yeah if i could say um jump in here um like so the ones that are most per that, that resonate with you those are really the ones to focus on so right you know you know we're doing the weekly ones and it's and a lot of it has to also do with with recording so that people later on can also if they see that issue and they say oh yeah that resonates with me they can go in and do that in terms of your personal coding you know you want to basically hone in on that issue so if you if you have identified something in security say certain situations and then you're able to so i would just focus on that and you could you know just continue with that until your you know the level of discomfort etc is resolved and you can right. use the custom process but the other thing i'd like to say and johanna knows this well because she trained me is that um you can use the the universal healing code the one you know just the universal code yes. for any issue and you right. can get you know a lot of benefit you know these custom processes yes. are more powerful because they're directed at a certain issue right. but so you know don't i wouldn't feel yes. compelled you have to you know do the weekly uh, you know right. per se and uh, Dr. David, how how long? Well, uh, as you say, you're supposed to do them three times a day for six minutes each session, um, which is three times. How long? How, how yeah. long should I do that one? The insecurity code one. Should well, it be a week? Should it be two or yeah. three weeks? You know, we we do do we do do uh, testing like you know the truth testing to try to determine what length of time would be necessary to heal the issue but the other thing the other way to do it just as you as you are is to um is is to gauge for yourself the progress how you feel about right. it. that's what the one to ten scale is and so yeah. you really want to get every major issue like i wouldn't be concerned with trying to cover everything i would be more concerned like this is my major issue like i've discussed what my major issue you know that's a, those are the things that we really spend a lot of time on and we also come back to you know it circles right. back after you know oh yeah not this again you know <laughs> oh my god yeah. Yeah. it's not yeah. as bad as it was you know to five years ago but so, right. Um, yeah. So, so yeah. That that that's that's yeah. And and uh, uh, Dr. David, should I be doing? Because uh, I am going to do that one, the insecurity code, because it really does uh, suit me very well. Um, Johanna last week gave me um, a custom healing code. So should I be doing the two of them three times a day? Or well, uh, let me or just say I... this also. Let me just say, I mean, three, the 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 more you do, can be better. But the, the idea is that, um, you know, you don't want to stress about doing it either. Like you don't yeah. want to be, it's kind of like the person who's exercising obsessively or something, you know, it right, can get right, to be a bad yes. thing. So, yes. so the more you can do comfortably, you yes. know, the better, because you'll get the effect. And, and again, I just want to stress this point for anyone who's listening is that, you know, the intention is really key. So like, if you can not only get in on the issue, but you know really feeling your heart you know this is you know and i don't you don't probably it doesn't sound like you would have any uh, problem with that you know but 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 to to for the people that are might not be quite bought into it yet to to to, to have that intention is i think is probably more important than anything in, in terms of getting an effect right right well that's what i'm going to do uh, uh dr david and um I presume you're going to be here next Wednesday again, because um, I know it's coming into the Christmas period. Well, it is. Well, it is in America as well. Um, but I just want to say I look forward to 
hearing you talk and Dr. Alex and Johanna, it's kind of like a family. And that lady was on last week, Marilyn from, I think she's from Australia, but, um, you know, she, she really, you know, um, you know, what she said really struck a chord with me. And I, you know, I felt very bad for her and all she had to say. Um, but I do feel like it's a family, you know, it's a family thing. And I, I, I just say, Wednesday night is my night for Dr. Alex and Dr. David. So do not disturb me, you know. But I want to say thank you very much, Dr. David, again, and Johanna. And um, I, I am spreading the word here. I go to physiotherapy and I tell the physio, you need to spread the word and to get people to do the healing code. Um, I can't find my book, but um, I, I explained to her what the basic healing code is, as you said, the original healing code. And as you said, that will heal, heal a multitude of problems, which it did for me. And um, again, I know I'm rambling, but thank do, you very no, much. I had, a, I had a question. Do you, do, you, do you find a difference in the way people respond to you and, you know, view you? Yeah, I do. I do. And, you know, um, I, you know, I spent years in America and I always felt that people listened to me more because of my Irish accent. Whereas here, I love to hear your accent because I know you're in New York and Dr. Alex is in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, I think. And I presume Johanna is in California. Uh, I'm in yeah. Pennsylvania, but I'm back and forth. But anyway, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, no. But I spent that's where I spent 15 years is in New York. And I absolutely loved it. I really, really loved it. Um, uh, but yeah, no, I, I do feel people view me differently, I suppose, you know, but look at um, uh, I have to take it the way it is. And, you know, the healing codes are really helping me. Uh, Johanna's healing code from last week was uh, the, the, the custom healing code was really wonderful. And um, I just want to say thank you very much. It really helps me just even listening to you talk. It's just wonderful. <laughs> thank you for calling. Yeah, thank you for saying so. Thank you, Davis. Thank you, Dr. Davis. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So if anyone else has any questions, uh, if you're on the phone, you can press star nine. That'll raise your hand. Um, actually, what we're going to do is go ahead and shift to, oh, just a moment. Let me check one thing here. Okay, Becky, Becky does say yes, feels like a family and April says happy to be part of this group too. We are so happy to have you guys too. Um, what we're going to do is um, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to open the line for any.